Today, we are going to perfectly predict the results at Bash in Berlin. Now, if you watch my SummerSlam prediction video, you'll realize I got every prediction right. Definitely don't go back and watch that because I haven't really looked back. I just think I got everything right. But anyways, Bash in Berlin looks like it's going to be a phenomenal show, so let's get into it. The first match to discuss here is the self-proclaimed terror twins of Rhea Bloody Ripley and Damian Priest versus the insufferable team of Dominic Mysterio and Liv Morgan. This one probably has the closest odds over who's going to win. I wouldn't call it a 50-50. I think it's probably 55% people think the Terror Twins are going to win and 45 pick Dom and Liv. I'm actually going to lean with Dom and Liv here purely because of Judgment Day involvement. Now the Judgment Day getting involved here I think is going to lead to the next part of the story where Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley, instead of just, you know, having to deal with two on fours every week or two on fives. Instead of that, they're going to reach out and they're going to find Jey Uso and Sami Zayn to come and help back them up. And then maybe at Bad Blood, you could run this match back, but maybe with a stipulation this time, some sort of extreme rules match, some sort of crazy stipulation, which is going to allow Rhea Ripley to just wail on Dominic Mysterio with like a, a chair or like a kendo stick or something. So I am going to lean towards Liv and Dom because I know Triple H loves his long-term storytelling, and I think this story still has more to tell over the future. I just want to take some time quickly to let you all know that I will be live for WWE Bash in Berlin. I will also be live for NXT No Mercy the next night, but that's not what this video is about. I will be live for Bash in Berlin, so if you want to hang out and you want to come chill in the chat, you can just click the link in the description below to go to TikTok, YouTube, or Twitch, and I will be live on all three platforms. Next up is the undisputed WWE Champion in Cody Rhodes versus his current friend, best friend, whatever you want to call him, Kevin Owens. Now, WWE has been planting a heel turn for Kevin Owens for quite a bit now. I mean, they've literally called it out. I mean, Grayson Waller and Austin Theory put together a compilation of Kevin Owens betraying a bunch of people. And yeah, I mean, let's be honest here. Kevin Owens as a heel is just peak entertainment. I mean, he's doing an incredible job as a babyface, but you know, if you're going to be facing Cody Rhodes, and I don't think this is going to be their only match, yeah, eventually he's going to have to turn heel. Or maybe this is a little clever rouge from Triple H, who is not going to turn Kevin Owens heel, but wants everybody to think he's going to turn heel. Now, uh, something I was going through and trying to figure out is, I believe there's going to be many moments for Kevin Owens to turn heel during this match, and especially after the match, I feel like he's going to be holding the title in his hand. I, let, let's make this point clear. C Cody Rhodes winning this match, and I don't think it's even close. But there's going to be many moments where I think Kevin Owens, specifically after the match, when he's holding the title in his hand, and he's just ready, and he's just, do I hit him now? Do I hit him now? And then he's just going to say, no, you know what? He's going to present Cody the title. And it's going to be a big moment because I do think a lot of fans want Kevin Owens to turn heel. And there's been a large conversation about Cody Rhodes' opponents just being, you know, great matches and not having enough story. And yeah, Kevin Owens turning heel on Cody Rhodes would be a huge story for them in the future. And the more I think about it, the more I don't believe a heel turn is coming both on ba at Bash in Berlin. And I don't think it's going to happen at all, to be honest with you. Because I just feel like they wouldn't turn three superstars heel to face Cody Rhodes. I mean, you had AJ Styles fake his retirement and attack Cody. You had Kevin Owens. Now who's going to turn heel? And then eventually down the line, you're going to have Randy Orton. I mean, no, I just feel like there's too many guys that are just going to turn heel and attack the main champion. I think we've done the story once already. We're probably going to do it again with Randy. I don't see Kevin Owens turning. So right now I'll say Cody wins clean. Kevin Owens struggles with the idea debates turning heel and then chooses not to. I remember when we talked about how much Triple H loves long-term storytelling and keep that in mind when I talk about the next one, which is the Unholy Union take on the dynamic duo of Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill for the Women's Tag Team Championship. Now, the reason I mentioned long-term storytelling here is because it's very obvious that in the future, we are going to end up with a feud between Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill, and I believe this is where we get the first initial moments leading into that feud. Now, I have seen a lot of people predict that the turn is going to happen here, and I wouldn't be shocked to say the least, but what I will say is I feel like there's still a little bit longer and more of a story to tell, and maybe instead of just doing the turn, let's just plant some seeds here. I think what you should have is you should have the Unholy Union cheat and have, you know, let's say Blair Davenport come out and help them and, you know, poke the eye, whatever, whatever. And Bianca ends up taking the pin as Jade is about to come back in and try to save the pin. She can't. And then at the end of the match, you have Jade and Bianca facing off and Bianca's like trying to hug her and say like, don't worry, like everything's going to be okay. And 
Jay just like looks upset and just storms off. The important thing here is that Jade and Bianca cannot be on the same page. They need to be off something in the end of the match or maybe, you know, Jade is busy taking out Isla Dawn or something in outside the ring. And as she's like doing that, you know, she turns around, she notices Bianca is literally taking the pin. And before she can get in and save her, boom, the match is over and, you know, they've lost. And that's where it's going to build up because I think Jade needs to become upset at Bianca. Now, just because Jade is going to leave upset at Bianca, it doesn't mean that you can't do a Bianca heel turn down the line. I just think that planting the seeds now with Jade being upset at Bianca losing and the miscommunication and that causing problems down the line. I mean, the seeds were planted when the Unholy Union won in the first place and, you know, Jade and Bianca couldn't get back in the ring to stop the pin and the Unholy Union won and it drove Bianca and Jade crazy. So I think this is going to plant the seeds. I still think Jade Cargill is going to eventually turn on Bianca Belair. But at the end of this match, the important thing is they need to look at each other and recognize that they're not in sync, they're not together, they're not on the same page. Next up is the continued feud between CM Punk and Drew McIntyre in a strap match. Now before anything, I just want to say props to everybody involved here in CM Punk and Drew McIntyre specifically, but you want to throw Seth Rollins in that mix, whatever. I want to say props to all of them because in Triple H's five match PLE format, it's hard to get a non-title match on the show and Drew McIntyre and CM Punk's feud has been so impeccable and so perfect in every way that they have now been on two shows without any titles involved, which is very rare in the situation with Triple H's PLEs. But now for anybody who doesn't understand the rules of this match, it is a strap match, so they will be strapped to each other and the way to win is that you have to hit all four corners of the turnbuckles in order to win. Now forgive me, but the last time I remember a strap match like this was JTG versus Shad, where JTG ended up winning, and honestly, the match was like, whatever, but, you know, it was an interesting concept. I just, I guess besides beating the life out of each other with the, the strap that they're going to be attached to each other with, I don't really see the purpose of having this this style of match. Now, the main reason I brought up the JTG and Shad match is because even though Shad beat the life out of JTG, JTG still won because while he was getting dragged around, he hit all four corners of the turnbuckle. And that's what I expect to happen. I expect CM Punk to get pretty much abused the entire time versus Drew McIntyre, but managed to sneakily tag all three turnbuckles before he hits a GTS, jumps and tags the last one and gets the win. And it is of crucial importance that CM Punk does win the second match here. First of all, I highly doubt that they would have CM Punk lose back-to-back -back PLEs, but overall, in order to set up the third match, which I think will be some sort of crazy stipulation at Bad Blood, you need to have CM Punk win at least one of the first two matches. He lost the first one, so he's got to win this one. And with the way I propose with, you know, CM Punk sneakily tagging the four turnbuckles while Drew's not really paying attention or just focused on beating him up, I think is the perfect way to protect Drew because, once again, there's no pinfall, submission, or anything. It's just tagging the four turnbuckles gets you the win. So you don't have to make Drew look weak, and you're not going to have him look weak by losing this match because he doesn't have to eat a pin or a submission or anything like that. And last but certainly not least, the World Heavyweight Champion Gunther defends his title against Randy. Orton. Now, this is one of the first major incidents of the brand split not being applied because Randy Orton is a SmackDown superstar and he is challenging Gunther, who's the World Heavyweight Champion, on Monday Night Raw. But the story does make sense, right? Because Randy faced Gunther for the King of the Ring finale and Randy ended up losing despite the fact it was very clear Randy Orton's shoulders were off the mat. So it does make Randy seem a little bit more upset because he should have been challenging for the world title on his brand with this opportunity, but he hasn't gotten to because of this screwy finish that happened and listen the line makes sense Gunther is the heavy 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 favorite to win Randy Orton thinks he's going to enter enemy territory and he's going to I don't think he's going to get booed but at the same time I do believe they're going to be cheering hardcore for both superstars very similar to AJ Styles and Cody Rhodes in France now there's two ways you could book a victory in this one and both of them are going to be for Gunther because I believe Gunther is winning this one and the first one is you have Gunther pretty much beat Randy Orton as clean as you possibly can. You have him win in a dominant way, not squashing Randy Orton, but you have him beat Randy Orton with no shadow of a doubt that Gunther should have won back in the King of the Ring match and he should have won now. The other option, and definitely is a common option, is you have a guy like Ludwig Kaiser come out and help Gunther get the win. The thing is, is I feel like Triple H needs to stop just using the, you know, heel tactics, constantly lead to a heel winning and just let Gunther be a dominant champion. When he was the Intercontinental Champion, sure there were times where he had help, but very rarely did he need it.
needed. Gunther was a dominant champion, and he should be a dominant world champion the same way he was for the Intercontinental Championship. He doesn't need help to win this match. No matter how much of a legend Randy Orton is, Gunther can still confidently beat him. And personally, despite the fact that Randy Orton is my favorite superstar ever, that's how I would book it. I would have Gunther confidently beat Randy Orton. Not, once again, no squash, nothing like that. You have Randy hitting RKO out of nowhere, sure, whatever. But you need to have Gunther win this match clean if we are going to take this title reign seriously. And I know there's going to be plenty of people that are going to be fuming and saying, Randy deserves to be treated better. Randy deserves to be treated better. But let's be honest. Every single match here, the loser is going to be pasted all over the internet saying, this person deserves better. And no matter who wins and who loses, it's always the same thing. So let's not get into that. The whole point is, I think Gunther needs to win this one confidently. So make sure to return to this video after Bash in Berlin and let me know how right I was or how wrong I was. But thank you all so much for tuning in. Let me know in the comments down below what you agree and disagree with and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.